good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Daniel Black. I'm here with uh, Rick James, who's been a, a long time uh, MySQL helper on uh, Stack Overflow and DB Stack Exchange, and has been around for quite a while. Uh, Semi-retired now, but um, has previously worked for Yahoo, um, where he developed lots of skills in developing, hitting it, solving problems. Probably should have rehearsed that more. <laughs> cool. So, Rick, I invited you today to um, talk about your experience and, and what you see is sort of happening in the, the user community and um, how MariaDB is, is helping or not helping, as the case may be, um, users' needs. So I um, want to sort of talk about, I, I mean, we've seen over the years um, numerous uh, users on uh, DBA Exchange and Stack Exchange getting in trouble. So what are the, the normal beginner SQL user troubles that happen? Well, the beginners tend to not necessarily even know what an index is. Once we get past that hurdle, which of course is pretty basic, uh, then they start indexing every column, which <laughs> is a waste. And they haven't discovered composite indexes. That's where you have two columns, and that helps with certain types of queries. And then they, um, they think they know all about indices, and they say, why is it this query using my index? And then it gets into details of why it might not use an index, simply because it would be more efficient not to bother with the index. You're, you're going to look at most of the rows anyway. Um, they don't necessarily put a primary key on every table, and that's sort of a no-no, especially with NODB. They sometimes don't realize that the primary key is unique and it is an index. So they add another index or another unique on the same column. Minor waste, not nothing serious. Sometimes they ask, well, shouldn't this be a hash index? Why, why is it just B trees? Well, B trees are as good as hashes and they are even better in some situations. Yep. Um, they look at the CPU and say, oh my goodness, uh, the CPU is pegged, what's going on? It's usually a poor query that needs either a better index or maybe rewriting the query to do it a different way. Um, <clears throat> They uh, reach for buying new hardware, and if I get hold of them, I say, no, no, let's try to uh, speed up the program, speed up the queries. And usually, there is a way to speed up the queries. I rarely see a production system with, uh, certainly not with all CPUs running full tilt. Often, it's less than one CPU's worth, and it's doing just fine and doing as much as they want. Uh, I guess the, the way a, a lot of um, queries are framed is like, help me tune my way out of this problem <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. as well. The, uh, the Finding the worst query, you, you need to find, use the slow log. That's one way to do it, unless you can analyze the program otherwise. And the slow log, which uh, especially like the PT Query Digest for summarizing what you can get from the slow log. It essentially points to the worst query and the next few bad ones. And sometimes uh, fixing that will fix all of your CPU problems. Okay. I had one example of a, um, a machine that was pegged at 100% CPU. I found the slow log, found that there was a uh, simple uh, query that was asking, is the date uh, equal to this? And it had date of the column equal to a constant. So the couldn't use the index on the date column. In other words, it wasn't sargeable. S-A-R-G-A-B-L-E. That's a word that I learned over the time uh, that, that discusses why, uh, what, what kinds of queries, what kinds of where clauses do not use indices? 
because you've got an indexed column hiding inside a function. Okay. This is a common mistake by many people. Okay. So if we go back to, you know, what should, you know, beginner users do to um, uh, prepare themselves for, for writing in SQL? Well, most people don't really do much or for that matter, need much. I mean, they, they, they can uh, pretty quickly learn what a select looks like and write one. The one of the hurdles to get past is not programming procedure wise. In most languages, you do step, step, step. But with SQL, you're doing you're applying some action to an entire table of rows. Um, SQL can do that quite efficiently. Learning to do that makes things a lot faster and less code to write. Yeah. And, and people getting over the hurdle of, oh, okay, I'll just write a loop and then do SQL inside of loop. Um, I Loops, guess the cursors, other of... those things are, are essentially no-nos. Yep. Uh, okay, so it's just... Cursors tend to be slow. So, so it's just, I, I guess, users on, on their... The SQL journey is um, hitting a problem and just getting over it in uh, a rather predefined way. Cool. And my okay. um, MariaDB is very easy to, to get started with. So um, you can do it yourself on that. your own machine. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I guess the intermediate users and, and you know what happens after a while that you know a user has got a a, a well-defined running thing and then it just s starts to fall off w what are the the normal signs that you know something's starting to go wrong and what are the um typical fixes the typical sign is that your web page or whatever you're doing uh takes several seconds to come up and what I would do at that point is look at the queries and see what they're doing. Um, of course, it could be non-SQL code that's taking forever to bring up the web page. But that's a matter of digging through the code to see what it is that's taking the time. Okay. Okay. Um, so it... it often I guess comes to back to something fairly basic like lack of an index, your data so size has grown. Um, some data, has, data has, has grown, grown. different yep. query plans got used, may not be the right one. Yeah, okay, yep. so it's yeah, showing the same sort of problems. A basic tool is explained to tell you what the query plan is, but unfortunately, it doesn't tell you what to do when it's not a good query plan. Okay. And I don't have a good solution for that. Should maybe the explain output sort of uh, go to a link to say, you know, solve this. <laughs> um, what I do at this point is I take a, an S, uh, a select statement and I can see what indexes are needed or how to rewrite it. I've gotten to that point, but it took me more than a decade. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> so, keep with it and, and you'll you'll be perfect at it. <laughs> yep, keep with it. Okay. That's a good start. Um had a um, another presenter talking about uh database um oh sorry, let's start with um DBAs and sysadmin and devsops is do you see they're actually in a devops role or, or do people try to keep in development or sysadmin? Since uh, MariaDB is simple enough, a typical programmer can be the DBA, the sysadmin, everything all rolled in one. And when I was working for big companies, that was I mean, th there was a clear divide between the programmer and the DBAs. And that was perhaps partially because places like Oracle essentially needed that. There was that much difference between 
writing code and maintaining the system. Uh, but with MariaDB, there's not that much uh, need for a DBA. So Certainly when you get to, to a big uh, setup. So you the continued help. focus on like ease of use and um, default tunings that are right um, have made it almost more accessible that way compared to Oracle? Well, one thing to note there is that the, uh, the default settings of when you load this, uh, the database engine have been reasonably tuned a decade ago they were pretty bad and certain things had to be fixed before you could get to square two. <laughs> now uh, the defaults are mostly in good shape. And it's only when you get into a serious programming with serious problems that you may need help saying, okay, how can I better tune this setup for this type of application? Okay. Um, so, you know, the, there's MySQL Tuna that's been around for a while. Is there um, any other, you know, usual resolution mechanisms that um, uh, people should attempt or just ask? <laughs> um, there aren't a lot that you can necessarily immediately learn to do yourself. Uh, I'll probably bring up a few as we go along. I haven't specifically isolated that. Getting the index right is the biggest thing for performance, and that's not trivial. Okay. So, yeah, getting expert help, um, you know, is a uh, good time saver. <laughs> yep. It can be. Yep. Okay. Um, we've seen over you know the last 10 years that database containers and kubernetes is is taking off uh, how mature is this um, on the database side the database is quite mature the things around it well for building web pages for example there are something like a hundred third-party pro products that try to abstract the database. And they irritate me in that now you have to learn the abstraction. And then when things go wrong, you have to learn SQL as well. So you're having to learn twice as much than if you just did it yourself. Okay. Right. And the other extreme is the no SQL direction is you have to reinvent a SQL. <laughs> I'm exaggerating a bit, but oh, you need an I index? Okay, one. figure out how to write one. <laughs> <laughs> I want loosely defined types, but now I've got to write all the type checking in the code. <laughs> ah, yes, yes. Yeah, type checking. Haven't done that in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, yeah, another common thing from there. Okay, um, so um, on, I guess, an ecosystem point of view, there's, I guess, MariaDB provides, I guess, a server, but a lot of the tools that and and frameworks that people develop are, are outside of MariaDB and just occurring in their their own way. Um, and oh, you mentioned that. before there's like some disconnect, um, so. What would your of view of of a, an ideal ecosystem look like? An ideal ecosystem, a machine of my own. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Bricona toolkit is very handy. MariaDB has a bunch of tools too, and uh, some of them are at a price. Some of them come free. Um, I tend to use for my own purposes, Apache, PHP, MySQL. Well, any flavor of MySQL, including MariaDB. Okay. So, I mean, I mean PHP, you know, ex exposes SQL pretty much in a, a raw form, which um, sort of saves you from 
you know jumping between the the framework and the um and, and sql or do you use some kind of php um orm or i write helper? sql yep I, I i don't have anybody generating sql 20 years yep. ago i said hmm i'm doing a lot of uh, sql in various um, flavors i should write something a front end to this and then I looked at the details. Hmm, let's see, that has limit, that doesn't have limit. This has this syntax, that has that syntax. Forget it. <laughs> I better just write it myself. So if that comes and back to the um, original um, uh, uh, question before that, you know, maybe an ideal ecosystem is uh, such that uh, a close eye is, you know, kept on um, these ORMs and ensuring that they have all the the syntax and the features that the underlying server has. As uh, who's going to do all that work? <laughs> there, there is that. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. just recently with CTE uh, over new syntax, totally different syntax. How about the uh, sequence table in uh, MariaDB that I love? Give me a sequence of one to 10 or can then convert that to dates, how to get a table of dates. I love that one, but anyway. <clears throat> yeah, okay, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of gaps there. <laughs> well, yeah, but glad you like that one. I, I like it too. <laughs> I'll pass it on to Sergey. <laughs> yep, okay. So, um, what, what do you see um, being developed in um, MariaDB to account for user needs in the near future. Is, is there account gaps for user needs? Hmm? Are user needs changing? Not a lot. Uh, there are still data warehouses at the big end. There are still WordPress like things at, um, for blogging. Uh, there are still um, hmm. No, I, I don't. Huh. There's yeah. transaction. Sure, lots of transactional stuff. It's been amazingly stable for a large number of years, but the only difference is we're now talking terabytes instead of gigabytes, and before that we were talking megabytes. And okay, so. so the, the scaling also means that, you know, we've got more storage and we've got slightly, um, you know, more processes kind of uh, available as things go by that too. Multiple cores is a waste. MariaDB yeah. does not need multiple cores. It Well, it needs a few, but not many. Uh, the typical machine has far more cores than you need, unless you've got some sloppy queries. Uh, with SSDs, uh, IO has suddenly become a lot better, a lot faster. Uh, things like sharding are still challenging and you're on your own for doing sharding, um, but not many people do sharding. Uh, massive ingestion of uh, stuff, like uh, I encounter people who are tracking a number of vehicles, uh, sensors on vehicles send in information every 10 seconds or whatever. They're recording that in a database and then digesting it or something. Uh, Sensor-like stuff is always a big challenge. Uh, and it tends to be something that you can't do it your do yourself. You need big machine, big thinking of how to do the, how to digest the data, et cetera. That's on the big end of things. There's still a lot of stuff on the little end. I mean, writing a blog, how difficult is that? <laughs> true, true. And yeah, I mean, the, WordPress the hard is part is thinking what to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, you certainly, you know, write a, um, a few blogs and, and articles yourself. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Now, what I try to do is aim at... Uh, what you need to do, not what you can do. A reference manual says what you can do, but should I? 
Is that the best way to do it? Which way should I? Uh, so I try to say, okay, for this task, go that direction. Okay. Um, okay, in conclusion, um, do you, what areas do you think MariaDB should um, improve? Um, there are, well, let me see, I have a list here of... Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, <it's good. laughs> Lay it on. Uh, windowing, windowing functions need better performance. Um, there are, there's, people try to do, give me some, uh, a few random rows. There's no clean way to do that. Group-wise max is another thing that is better done with some, to, some technique in the engine rather than kludgy ways by the user. Uh, a materialized view would help with uh, data warehousing. Analytics, You've yeah. reached into some degree of uh, data typing, such as the UUID, uh, JSON. There's the possibility of IP addresses being a data type. There is. It's on yeah. point at six. If it is. A, yeah. A lot of people want to turn a table sideways. Uh, True. That's doable but it's tedious and i think there is a standard syntax that does that so what the heck I'm trying to do it uh, the performance schema is there but it's so gnarly that uh it needs a better wrapper around it uh some sargeable tests like the one i mentioned with date could be optimized in the optimizer rather than forcing the user to rewrite his query to get some speed. Yep. Uh, a lot of novices come in with, and use left join everywhere, not realizing they're really doing an inner join half the time. And when I try to read their code, okay, is this really a left join or not? <clears throat> So some detection of you're added a, a where clause on, on the right side. Yeah. So therefore it can just forget that left is there. I haven't looked to see if explain extended actually does that for us, but anyway, yeah. uh, sure. there's no optimization for or practically none anyway, that or is much less often used in a where clause compared to and, uh, but there's essentially no way for the engine to do the work. I often tell people to turn it into a union and that's a bit tricky. Yeah, comes a, a bit bladded. I guess with CTEs that can be a little bit simpler, but it, it, the CTE no. itself is a bit complex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it gets it down to a single reference, but whether it's optimized. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Well, um, thank you for your insights today and um, much appreciate the interview. And yeah. Oh, have a good day. Enjoyed it. Good.